Everyone, please put your cell phone on silent mode. We consider that holding an international conference this year would give a new impulse to the normalization of the situation. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I am possible. Good morning all. I, Mrs. Dipti Paleda, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, welcome you all to this program. A very good morning everyone. I am Vikas Atnadi, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. At the outset, <coughs> I and my co-host, Mrs. Deepthi Pallada, on behalf of GMIT and our own behalf, welcome you all to the second international conference on emerging trends in science, engineering, and management in association with IFERC. Uh, I request all the dignitaries uh, to take their seats on the dais.
Thank you, Dignitaries. Before we continue with the formal protocols, I request Ms. Amruta and Ms. Anusha of Second Sem to invocate the event. Ganjabadana Beduve Gauri Tanaya Trijagavanditane Sujana Raporevane Gajabadana Beduve Gauri Tanaya Trijagavanditane Sujana Raporevane Gajabadana Beduve Shanku Shadhara Parama Pavitra Mushika Vahana Muni Jana Prema Pashanku Shadhara Parama Pavitra Mushika Vahana Muni Jana Prema Gajabadana Bedu Mudadi Ninaya Padava Toro Sadhu Vanditane Adara Dindali Mudadi Ninaya Padava Toro Sadhu Vanditane Adara Dindali Sarasi Janabashri Purandara Vitalana Niratanene Yuvante Varadaya Mado Sarasi Janabhashri Purandara Vitalana Niratanene Yuvante Varadaya Mado Gajavadana Beduve Gauri Tanaya Trijaka Vanditane Sujana Rapurevane Gajabadana Beduve Thank you Anusha and Amrita for your melodious invocation. Light is a symbol of brightness and prosperity. On this auspicious note, we have lamp lighting ceremony. To do the honors, I request all the dignitaries to come forward and light the lamp.
thank you dignitaries for uh, inaugurating the event. Now I request Dr. Sunil Kumar BS, Dean Academics, Professor and Head Department of Information Science and Engineering to present the welcome note. Over to you sir. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, a hearty and warm welcome to this August uh, virtual and real uh, gathering of uh, second international conference on uh, emerging trends in science, engineering and management, abbreviated ICET SEM 2021, being organized by Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, GM Institute of Technology, Daungere, in association with IFERP. <coughs> it's indeed a pleasure organizing this program because this uh, GM Institute of Technology, Davanagere, located in the uh, middle part of Karnataka, India, is celebrating 20th year uh, of its existence. On this uh, second des decennial year, we have been organized this uh, international conference and it is supposed to be the second internal, international conference in this institution. It's a great pleasure having uh, all the, the dignity, dignitaries on this occasion. I take this opportunity to welcome one and all. Let me take uh, the opportunity to welcome uh, Dr. Rami Hikat Al Hadik, who is the, the chief guest of uh, this international conference inaugural function is the professor and of uh, global education career center london uk he has been connected virtually on behalf of my institution i extend a warm and hearty welcome to him welcome you sir we have our uh, guest of honor dr rudra banu satapati who is the, the CEO of, uh, and of uh, Technocrat Group, IFERP. On behalf of the, the institution, management, principal and staff, I extend warm welcome to him. We have another uh, guest of honor and also the keynote address speaker. Professor Talal Yusuf, who is the, the Chief Business Development Officer, CBDO, Aviation Australia. I extend warm welcome to him also. <laughs> it's indeed uh, uh, my privilege to welcome our uh, management person and the Chief Patron of uh, this international conference, our Honorable Chairman, Sri G.M. Lingaraju, sir. I welcome you, sir. Sir has been virtually connected to this international conference. It's time to welcome the, the patrons of uh, this international conference. I extend warm welcome to Sri Vayu Subhash Chandra sir, who is the management representative of GM Institute of Technology, Davankere. May I request Dr. Sanjay Pandey sir to hand over flower bouquet. We have been continuously supported and advised by our senior person, Dr. Manjappa, who is the, the director of R&D and innovation, uh, GM Institute of Technology. I extend warm welcome to you, sir. I may request uh, Professor Bharat Itagi to hand over the, the bouquet. It's, uh, our below principal, Dr. Y. Vijay Kumar, sir, who is continuously supporting and uh, being the, the backbone of all our activities. I extend warm welcome to our below principal, Dr. Y. Vijay Kumar. May I request Dr. Srinivas CV, mechanical head, to hand over a bouquet. <laughs> D 
this conference is being convened by Dr. Praveen J, who is the, the professor and head of uh, electronics and communication engineering. Uh, because of his uh, continuous effort, day and night, he could able to make this event to happen. I extend a hearty and warm welcome to Dr. Praveen J, and I request Dr. Betagari to hand over bouquet to him. I welcome Dr. Bharat Kayan, who is the, the Dean R&I, uh, GM Institute of Technology. May I request Dr. Pujar to hand over a bouquet to I take this opportunity to welcome all the, the steering committee members and also heads of various departments who are uh, gathered here. Hearty welcome to all of you, sir. I welcome our uh, honorable members of uh, Governing Council, GM Institute of Technology, whose support has made this uh, event to happen. I extend uh, a warm welcome to all the, the Governing Council members. Uh, all of them are virtually connected to this international conference. <laughs> Nevertheless, the effort and hardship of our uh, co-conveners who made this uh, event more successful, Dr. Kiran Kumar, Dr. Onkarappa HS, Dr. Shivanna, and Dr. Prabhakar. Uh, I extend a warm welcome to all these co-conveners. Let them stand a while and uh, take a ovation. Right. I extend warm welcome to the, the complete supporting team of uh, IFERP because uh, this uh, international conference has been organized in co coordination with the, the IFERP. Uh, a warm welcome to all the supporting team of IFERP. <laughs> the institution is affiliated to VTU, Belagam, and uh, many of the, the institution professors, principals have been virtually connected to this uh, inaugural function. On behalf of uh, my institution, principal, staff, student, and on behalf of IFERP, I extend warm welcome to all these dignitaries. <laughs> Finally, I take this uh, opportunity to welcome all the, the faculty members of uh, GM Institute of Technology, the staff members, the students of GM Institute of Technology, who have been uh, worked for a long time for this international con conference and also being the part of this program on this occasion. Hearty welcome to all of you. I take this opportunity to welcome present media persons uh, who have been virtually connected to this international conference. With this note, I thank everyone for being give, giving me an opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. Now, I request the convener of the conference, Dr. Praveen J, Professor and Head, Department of ECE, to provide the introduction for today's conference. Thank you, madam. Very good morning to all the dignitaries, authors, participants, and coordinators. I'm Dr. Praveen Jai, IQAC Director, Professor and Head, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Welcome you all to this second international conference as the convener of the, this conference. This all began in the month of March when our beloved principal, Dr. Vijay Kumar sir, put through the idea of organizing an international conference. 
He always had a vision to convert the student's final year project into paper, patent or product. It was from then he took the driving seat and we the GMIT collaborated with Institute for Engineering Research and Publication IFERP to organize this international conference. Our Bidow principal sir had uh, sent an invitation to all the engineering colleges in Karnataka and different colleges in all the states of the country. Also, the respective department HUDs and faculty members also sent an invitation to all the faculty members of different colleges outside and within Karnataka. IFERP also supported us a great deal by sending the invitation to in and out, uh, outside the country. This conference will provide a very effective platform for all the researchers, scholars, faculty and students to showcase their research work to the world. The announcement of the conference led to a great response from researchers from different states in the country and across the globe. From overseas, we have received an abstract from Canada, the USA, Concordia University and Saudi Arabia King Saudi University, also from within India, we have received abstract from 16 states. From Andhra Pradesh, shortlisted two abstract out of eight. Harnachal Pradesh, two shortlisted out of three. Assam, one out of one. Chhattisgarh, nil out of one. Goa, one shortlisted out of two. Gujarat, one shortlisted out of one. Karnataka, 190 paper shortlisted out of 296 papers. Kerala, 1 out of 1. Maharashtra, 2 sh shortlisted out of 4. Madhya Pradesh, 1 out of 2. Punjab, 2 out of 4. Rajasthan, 8 paper shortlisted out of 8. Tamil Nadu, 5 shortlisted out of 19. Uttar Pradesh, 12 shortlisted out of 28. Telangana, 1 shortlisted out of 3. West Bengal, one shortlisted out of two. In total, we had received 383 abstracts and after scrutiny, 246 abstracts were shortlisted. This international conference will run in eight tracks. Each track will have a five parallel sessions. Track one, Department of Computer Science and Engineering with 49 papers. Track two, Department of uh, Information Science and Engineering with 21 papers. Track 3 and 4, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering and Associated Branches with Mechanical Engineering and Associate Branches with 47 papers. Track 6, Department of Civil Engineering with 30 papers. Track 7, Biotechnology and Associate Branches with 16 papers. Track 8, Business Management with 6 papers. Track 9, Basic Sciences with seven papers. Each session will have an external chair from the outside the Karnataka state and an internal session chair. Each session will be assessed by session coordinator and a session in charge. Each session from each track will be awarded with a best paper and best presenter for each title. Most importantly, as this conference in the virtual mode, it allows us to coverage different research ideas from across the globe. To sum up, I appeal everyone to make the best use of this opportunity. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The goal of education is understanding. The goal of training is performance. Now I request Dr. Y. Vijay Kumar, sir, Principal GMIT, re to release the conference proceedings, and I request all the dignitaries to join hands.
Thank you very much for releasing the conference proceedings, sir. Uh, now I request Dr. Manjapayas. Over to you, sir. Good morning to all the dignitaries on the dais and after dais. The chief guest of today's function of the second international conference on emerging trends in science, engineering and management, Dr. Ruddha Brahm Satipati, honor chief guest and international speaker and a keynote speaker of this conference from Global Education Career Center, who will be joining us. Both of us are joining us on online mode. Dr. Vijay Kumar, the president of this function. Dr. Subhash Chandra, the administrative officer and the management representative of this great alma mater. Dr. Sunil Kumar, Professor and Head of Information Science and Engineering and also Dean of this college. Dr. Bharat, Dean of Engineering, Professor and Heads of all the departments. Members of the Organizing Committee, Faculty members of this great organization, officials from Institute for Engineering, Research and Publications who have collaborated and supported this second international conference at this institution along with Dr. J. Praveen, Professor and Head of Electro Electronics and Communication who has been taken the responsibility of organizing this program in a befitting manner. Nevertheless, the invitees, contributors of the papers through the research findings and other participants and students of this great institution, all the family members of GMIT, teaching and non-teaching and technical staff of this institution and also invitees for this program. It gives me great pleasure and honor to be on this occasion to talk to you on the occasion of inauguration of Second International Conference organized in this institute, which can be written in the golden letters of the institute. It is a very important program of the institute in this state of pandemic. Most, uh, it is appropriate to congratulate the organizers, including the convener and the principal, for their efforts in bringing so many researchers, scientists, technocrats, and management experts to deliberate with the technical, scientific, developmental thoughts through the innovation along with management experts. Coincidentally, this day that is on 15th July is also World Technical Skill Day announced by United Nations General Assembly way back in 2014. Till uh, this date it is being celebrated throughout the world on 15th July every year. The theme of this year is being re-imagining youth skills is the theme of this year. 
Hence, it appropriately matched to the conference proceedings wherein most of the research findings and deliberations which are taking place are with respect to youths and researchers of this country and abroad. Therefore, I once again congratulate organizers for selecting this day for inauguration and also for deliberation of their skill development through research and innovation. I firmly believe that the conference organized at this great institution will provide following advantages to the attendees of this conference. The participants will have an opportunity to interact with international speakers, eminent scientists and scholars through their presentations and discussions. They will showcase their latest research findings through the means of presentations and publications. They will connect with top industry experts and join the special interest groups with networking of like-minded peers. They will also gain recognition and earn reputation and make their presence felt by the research showcase. They will also share their knowledge to enhance the growth of the research field in their interest, of their interest. Of course, with the above benefits to the participants, I believe that organizers have kept in their mind objectives mainly to integrate the interdisciplinary knowledge learning through their research to bring together a, in a single platform all the potential and competent scientists, technocrats and management professionals together for deliberations and participation at GMIT will be uh, which, which is housed in the central part of Karnataka. As you are aware of the fact that GMIT is one of the leading institution in this part of the country and in, in this part of the state, which is recognized not only by government of Karnataka, but also AICT by government of India. It is also recognized, rather accredited by NAC as well as NBA. It has got a very good footstep, the training and placement activity which is seen in this institute is an indication or a parameter to show that the GMAT is growing very well, especially in the part of skill training as well as in the uh, area of technological development. This type of conferences are very much essential for the benefit of all stakeholders in the development of skill sets required for the improvement of quality of life through technological interventions. I wish the deliberations in this conference become very close to the Government of India policy of Skill India, Make in India slogans. By the way of providing a improvement of their skills and refine their ideas in appropriate, in uh, approaching the problem solving capabilities through the research and innovation. This conference will also build up a, and also upgrade the research and innovation ecosystem not only in this institute but also in the country for the benefit of the mankind. As per the statistics which is available way back in 19, 2014, India ranks 81th place in the Global Innovation Index, wherein China is having less than 20th place.
countries like New Zealand, sorry, Switzerland has the first place with 135 crore population approaching to 5 trillion economy, uh, 5 trillion dollar economy. We are filing only 45,000 to 50,000 IP, that is intellectual property rights every year, wherein China files about 15 lakhs and US files about 6.5 lakhs IPRs every year. Out of the patents filed in India, 60% of them are mostly from NRIs. And almost 40,000 higher education institutions are there in India. Among them, 10,000 are either technical or management or professional education sector institutions. The rest of the other than the patents filed by NRIs, only big institutions like IITs, NITs, IASCs and other premier institutions including industries makes their stand in the you know, IP filings. We are happy to note that the GMIT is one such institution wherein this year itself we have about more than approximately 20 patents filed in the institution indicates that the institution is progressing on its path in a uh, wonderful manner. It is the right time or a right moment to improve upon the research culture in developing knowledge based Indian society to knowledge based educational economy. Hence, the contribution of this conference at GMIT and participants of this conference will be remembered for their contribution to EBOCAS. With this, I compliment and congratulate once again Dr. Praveen and his team for their wonderful effort, what they have made in bringing all the technocrats to the single platform. Thanks to the GMIT management, including its chairman, Mr. Lingraju, and the administrative officer and the management representative, Subhas Chandra, and the principal of this great institution, and also IFERP for their constant support to make this event possible. I once again congratulate all the participants and contributors of the paper for their conference, for its success. All the best to everyone. Good luck. I, I thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to talk to you on this occasion. journey of this type of organizations, such events in every year to have a strong step in the field of science, engineering, technology and management for the benefit of the society at large. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir, for your motivational words. Now I request Dr. Y. Vijay Kumar, sir, Principal GMIT, to make the presidential address. Good morning and very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, respected my beloved chairman, Sri Lingra, sir, and respected dignitaries on the dais, and dignitaries on the of dais, and my friend Rudra from IFERP and his team members from IFERP, and professors from across the globe, and finally my dear students. Good morning and warm welcome once again to everyone. Uh, I started journey with IFERP almost eight to nine years back. When first time Rudra has met me, almost nine to nine and a half years back, 
He was telling engineering colleges will grow only if they support research activities. During those days, we were more concentrated on video results and more concentrated on uh, two theory, one lab, this concept. And those days itself, uh, Rudra was telling that, no, sir, this is not the, it's not going to give food tomorrow. Better we have to do some activities where institution should become a platform and we should bring a, all the teachers, faculty members of various institutions and inculcate these research skills. Those days I didn't give much importance, but today I can understand what Rudra said those days is a true one. And uh, I had a journey with him almost, this is the eighth international conference. In earlier college I did seven, and this is a one with Rudra. And I also participated in various international conferences organized by him in other institutions, that also. And one very, very important thing which is there in my heart is I, give a, I gave a keynote address in my institution where I graduated, that is Venkateswara University. The, that has a, one it is due to Rudra. Thank you, Rudra, and congratulations for giving this wonderful opportunity and associating with the GMIT to conduct this international conference today. Uh, sir, what uh, Dr. Manjapa sir has said that, yes, it is 100% true. 10 years back, if you, even today, if you Google it, 10 years back, what was the India's uh, research culture in India is, if you see, there is no parameter in which India was uh, there in the 10 years back. Whether you take a index on innovation or patents, whatever you take it in the top 15 only, India was not there. But today, but today, in if you see Google it, we are there in the top three in attracting the investments from across the globe and the top position in the IT products and IT related products to export it or to consult with other countries. And we are in almost in the top positions is there. If, they, if you see particularly innovation index, India is there at 48th place. In 10 years time, these are the changes has happened. Uh, who are the reason for this is, yes, we. We, the faculty members, are the researchers, are the people who are coming out from this institution. Now, today, the second international conference, I think Electronics and Communication Engineering Department has kind perfectly, which suits to today's uh, requirement, that is emerging trends in science, engineering, and management. All three major domains where what the emerging trends is going to be there in the coming days. Now, earlier, if you talk to the researchers or the experts, they used to tell emerging trends in science is this, emerging trends in engineering is this, emerging trends in medical field is this. Like this, they used to explain. But today, if you ask, everyone is telling only one that is emerging area for all of us is artificial intelligence. Whether we like it or do not like it, everyone is telling that the future is going to become AI for irrespective of the domain or the area or the society you are living or you are working. Some examples I will tell what uh, things is, how the things are happening. Even I think you might have seen also in the Google it, you will come to know. <clears throat> the first one is already the major IT sector and the globe has already given as an, uh, either it may be call it as an uh, uh, objective or this thing, in a span of another one and a half years to two years, there will not be any software developer in the uh, world. Everything is the AI is going to take over. If you speak in a plain English, what is your requirement? The source, the pro program, what it is developed by an organization will take care of how to make a source code for that application. And our job is only to fine tuning and uh, keep it according to our one. That is going to come. Second thing, you already have seen Seattle, Amazon has established it as a uh, big shopping complex where not even single employee is there. Everyone can go there and then take the items and come back without any thing. And another thing is, another uh, uh, thing what is happening is Elon Musk is spending a lot of money on the IT products, which is going to completely change the environment. Now, uh, the same way if you come to in India, we are also highly focused now. What I told is from the no position to today, we are there in the top. Complete world is looking on us. Now here, even the government of India has also made some focus areas. 
if you ask triple ITs, government has given a clear uh, indication focus to the triple ITs to develop an IT products. And whoever is doing electronics related components manufacturing, for them the maximum benefits or incentives is given by the government. And similarly, IITs and NITs, the focus is to manufacture the products for the society use at a cheaper one, which needs to local markets. Like this, the things is happening today. Now, this stage to this stage we have come. The next stage is whether you like it or do not like it, India has taken a decision to be there on the limelight and wants to be there in the top uh, 10 positions take any parameter across the globe, wants to be there. For that, what we have to do? We have only two options. As an individual, work for that, co contribute from your side, whatever it is possible, and then come up and then feel uh, happy or great about the institution where you are working, or feel or great where the society to which you belongs, the state or the country, and make the something. The other option is, like what we have seen in the media in the last one year, that teachers are selling vegetables, faculty members are fasting without food, and uh, food, food pockets are donated to the teachers who are working in the schools where, where they are not getting salaries. And uh, after the farmers' suicides in the second place, teachers are there. All these things we have to prove it. Now ball is in our hands. How to do it? Uh? The best solution is this is a platform. Whenever, wherever possibility comes research, it's better to do it. Do some research, do some activities, and create your own individual specs that this is my area, and that particular program, if you work and then if you do it, you will also be happy, and the country also will be happy, and then we will progress. And this is what I want to convey. And this type of conferences in this campus, every semester one will be there. Started with a very, very, very simple note. And uh, while traveling, the lot of restrictions will come. Restrictions in the sense is about uh, academic excellence, how to achieve the academic excellence. And uh, all the publication, these type of things will come. And one more thing I want to tell all to the researchers, and this one is the coming days is, way, is going to be very, very dynamic. And we do not know, even the policy makers do not know how the things is going to shape, but a lot of experimentation is happening. And for this, the only solution is keep your mind open, keep your mind plain, and whatever it comes, see that what is the positivity in that, and accept it, and then start working, definitely you will become a success. If for somebody's health or somebody's sake, if you are put a leg, 100% is going to be failure. If you want to do it, you do it with your heart, 200% it becomes successful. Now with this, I wholeheartedly thank IFARP and making a lot of efforts to bring the papers from other countries and as well as the keynote speakers from the other countries to participate in this conference. Thank you so much for giving this wonderful opportunity. And I wholeheartedly thank Electronics and Communication Engineering Department Head Praveen and his team members for, the, for doing this wonderful activity in this campus. Thank you very much and all the best. Now I request Dr. Bharat Kane, Dean Research and Innovation, to present the word of thanks note. Yes. Okay, now I request Dr. Rudra Banu Satpati to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Okay, sir. We'll start, sir. We'll start. Is it okay? Am I live oh, yeah, sir. Your voice is clear, sir. We can start now. Very good morning, everyone. Uh, researchers and uh, speakers, delegates from different parts of globe, as well as uh, my beloved faculties and colleagues 
uh, from GM Institute of Technology, Dhawan Giri, eminent speakers of the conference, as well as the attendees from different countries like from Canada, United States, Saudi Arabia, and all leading states of India. So I feel obliged and privileged on this day uh, uh, to get, get this opportunity to speak on behalf of my organization, IAPRP, Institute for Engineering Research and Publication, once again uh, towards GMIT, GM Institute of Technology, Dhavangiri towards the conference of international conference in emerging trends in science, engineering and management. Well, it has been uh, many a times we are streaming this type of online conferences and activities uh, in our social media channels and our platforms as and we are insisting more and more participations uh, so that we could be uh, successful in delivering our commitment of uninterrupted academic services amid this COVID-19. <clears throat> the globe is facing this challenge of uh, uh, barrier and, and uh, the services of scientific and academic interaction has been disrupted and jeopardized up to a very large extent. But we feel these virtual platforms could be the source uh, amid this pandemic and ahead uh, of uh, COVID-19 also to get a solution where easy and convenient platform could be provided towards uh, knowledge propagation. I welcome everyone uh, from uh, GM Institute of uh, Technology, uh, Honorable uh, Principal Sir, Dr. Y. Vijay Kumar, uh, Dr. Uh, Manjappa S, Director R&D and uh, Innovation, Dr. Praveen J, Honorable Convener of the Conference, Dr. Sunil Kumar, Honorable Dean Academics, Dr. Ka Mr. Kavya Hegde, Mr. Vikas, uh, and Mr. Dipti uh, for uh, uh, their honorary dignitaries, and all the faculties, students, organizing committee members, and professional members of IAPRP, as well as international and national advisory, advisory members of IAPRP. Thank you very much, everyone, to be a part of this conference. Uh, this conference is being hosted by uh, IAPRP in collaboration with GMIT with a vision of providing uh, a great scientific platform with more than 250 plus technical presentations coming ahead as well as two spectacular international uh, keynote speakers available with us. Um, Professor uh, Talal Yusuf, Chief Business Development Officer, CBDO Aviation Australia Brisbane as well as uh, Dr. Uh, Rami uh, Hikmat al Hadriti, Visiting Professor, Global Education Career Center, London, United, King, United Kingdom. So uh, the conference uh, organized by IAPRP, Beyond the Barriers of Classroom Interactions, definitely is a productive uh, scope. And we have come up with this uh, ideas of uh, integrating universities and colleges all across the globe at a single global platform and connecting the researchers of same areas of interest or in interdisciplinary application through a common forum or through a common platform. So this was necessary. If you look back uh, in our country in uh, 2011, uh, there were limited number of international conferences organized. Then came uh, in 2000, early 13 or uh, in late uh, in early 2014 or late uh, 2013. If we uh, look at the statistics, the number of conferences organized by educational institutions and engineering colleges in India were very minimal and very less. In 2015, we came up with this idea of uh, collaborating with colleges and universities and where all the uh, management, uh, investment, expenses uh, will be borne by IAPRP particularly, uh, so that it becomes easy for institutions uh, not to uh, wait for uh, funds or uh, grant from uh, governments as well as uh, from public sectors, rather than to be self-independent and autonomous in organizing such type of activities, where IAPRP takes all the responsibilities, all the uh, part and all the process of conference propagation with my 
experience and uh, and uh, strong team uh, which we have uh, have uh, rendered uh, definitely fun and uh, with this process of rapid collaboration so we are looking for collaboration with institutions corporate sectors and industries in one hand along with collaborations um, what we already have with more than 1000 plus colleges in india and we have successfully uh, delivered uh, successful services uh, to the institutions by establishing institutional chapters uh, local and organizing committee for the members who have shared their valuable insight that have shaped the thinking of the conference we are, we also express our apartment feel honor to introduce the worthy keynote speaker dr rami hikmat al aditi many students both at masters and phd levels and has allowed him to improve his relations with and links with industrial sector and to focus on several real life industrial problems his scientific research efforts have resulted in the publication of 56 plus uh, research articles and three books in various international journals dr rami is in design and development he has recognized several worldwide short training courses that cover an extensive range of engineering disciplines and business related topics Dr. Rami is also a certified member in instruction and e-learning systems and has vast experience in e-learning teaching, distance learning and blended teaching courses. Dr. Rami is a member of many unions, associations, uh, societies and journal editorial boards across the world. Uh, the list goes on. It's, uh uh, okay, sorry for no just hold on for five minutes. Yes, yeah. sir. Sir, you can start now, sir. Rami, sir. Uh, now I request a uh, still resource person, Dr. Rami Hikmat Al Haditi, visiting professor, Global Education Career Center, London, United Kingdom, to take over and present uh, present the keynote. Over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, Rami, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for organizing this and a very uh, important subject. Thanks goes to all the uh, organizers, organizing committees and other committees. And also I would like to uh, welcome all the uh, attendees. Uh, I will share a slide for my uh, keynote speech. I hope uh, you will be able uh, to see it. Uh, can you see the slides, please? No, sir. No, sir. Just share your screen, sir. Rami, sir. Uh, just a minute. Sir, please uh, share your screen, sir. Yes. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. So, uh, my speech will be about the engineering graduates uh, are at the heart of Industry 4. So, I'll focus on uh, this subject. Uh, everybody knows that the world of work is changing it dramatically. Uh, and many jobs that exist today will become automated by the artificial intelligence. Uh, yes, the artificial intelligence and the automations are very, very important. It will be lifting the productivity and the economic growth. But on the other side, a lot of people, millions of people are worried about their future jobs. Do they have to switch the occupation or upgrade their skills? And there are a lot of reports uh, talking about this problem we facing in the near future. I selected a few just to illustrate this issue. 
according to McKinsey Global, they predict that half of the workplace's activities could be automated in the future. And according to the last World Economic Forum, 65% of children entering the primary schools today will be employed in jobs that do not yet exist. And here in the United Kingdom, the universities and the education sector are very well aware about this problem. There is a Universities UK report warns that the UK isn't even creating the workers that will be needed for the jobs that can be anticipated. So well, it will be much, much bigger. According to Pearson report on employment that in year 2030, there are a need for a different skills, such as the judgment, decision making, and analysis and evaluation of the systems. And by 2030, in the UK, they expect that they will have a talent deficit of between 600,000 and it could reach to 1.2 million workers. So the educators are asking a very important questions. Are our universities and educational system preparing the students for the jobs of the future, which we call the 21st century skills? Therefore, the educational institutions must prepare the students for such a skill and they have to review all curricula according to a solid strategic plan. And this strategic planning should include the faculty, the staff, and the student. Now, briefly, uh, because of the time lit limitation, I will not go in depth in explaining the 21st century skills we are talking about. I will just highlight the issue because I feel it's very, very important to all graduates and I'll focus at the end on the engineering graduate, which is related directly to our conference. So the three main categories of the skills we are talking about are the learning skills, which we call the four C's, and such a skills teaches the student about the mental process required to adapt and improve a born modern work environment. And the second category, the literacy skills, the IMT focuses on how a student can discern facts, publishing outlets, and the technology behind them. The third category, life skills, the flips, take a look at intangible elements of a student's everyday life. These intangibles focuses on both personal and professional qualities. And with the subcategories, it will come up to 12 important skills which contribute to students' future career. Let's just mention the first category, the four Cs. There are subcategories, four subcategories. The critical thinking, which is about finding solutions to problems. The creativity, how to think outside the box, the collaboration, working with others and the teamwork, and the communication, talking to others. It's very, very important. And those four skills are the most popular in which information is published. It's very important to rely on the publishing outlets because now we know that the social media and the databases floods with the information and a lot of the information are not uh, 
a trustworthy and we don't rely on it for academic research and for scientific research and publications. And the third one is the technology literacy, understanding the machines that make the information age and heading towards the digital age possible. Those days before Corona pandemic, some people, they don't know about uh, the application, the Zoom, the Google Meet in some parts of the world. Now everybody talking about the cloud computing, the big data analysis, the internet of things, the virtual reality, augmented reality, and so on. So we have to teach our students, the, these skills is very important for their future jobs. And the last main category, the life skill, and called the flips, it's very important for someone's personal life and a professional life at the same time. The flexibility, the deviating from plans as needed is very important. The leadership motivating a team to accomplish a goal, and we know everybody is a leader from his situation. We are not talking about the leadership in the high level of management, could be a supervisor leading a group of technicians. So we have to teach our students about the leadership. The initiative, starting projects, strategies, and the plans on one's own, this is not this comes naturally with handful uh, and a few percentage of people we have to inspire the students through, through our educational system. The productivity is very important, maintaining efficiency in an age of complication and confusion those days. And the social skills are very important, meeting and networking with others for mutual benefit. This is just, just general highlight and definition of the skills because we give a lot of hours training the people on these skills, especially the educators. Now I will go th quickly through a case study because I don't want to talk just theoretically. In order to test these skills practically, we have a chance to do a research, which is ongoing research. And this research carried out here in the UK in order to compare between a group of Iraqi engineering graduates versus a group of British engineering graduates. And the reason for choosing Iraqi engineers, because my background is Iraqi and I came in origin from Iraq and we've got a lot of Iraqi engineering students and the graduates here in the United Kingdom. That's why we chose this case study. What are the criterion? We have to choose a criterion. And we chose the Vatai criterion which is approved by the Engineering Council here in UK, because usually the Engineering Council, according to VATAI criteria, assists the graduates according to four domains. I can't go in depth. Uh, I'll just mention it quickly. Domain A deals with the knowledge and intellectual abilities, and there are some subdomains, and domain B, deals with the personal effectiveness and there are sub domains as you can see in the model and in the writing as well. Domain C deals with research organization and governance and domain D deals with communication, influence and impact. And when we tested both graduates, we came up with such results, and as you can see from the previous figure and from this slide, the general observation, the very general observation, are the Iraqi engineers are better in domain A, the knowledge and intellectual abilities, and they outperform 
the British graduates. But the British engineers are better in domain B, C, and D. And the general, general conclusion is because of the educational system. In Britain here, in the UK, United Kingdom, we teach these skills from primary school and we focus a lot on it in the middle schools and so on. That's why the British graduates much better from the personal effectiveness, research governance and organization, engagement, influence and inspire, because in their system they have a lot of assignment, essays, portfolio, presentation, what we call a project-based task, a group discussion, brainstorming, problem solving techniques. That's why the British students and the graduates much better than the Iraqis in this issue. In Iraq and in the Middle East, maybe in a lot of other countries in the other parts of the world, they focus a lot on the exams. First exam, mid exam, second exam, quizzes, and final exam. While here in UK, we give maximum 20% weight on the exam and maybe 70 to 80% goes to the skills. And this is a requirement for the near future. What we did for six months, we did train the Iraqis on these skills and you will be surprised after the six months, a lot of them outperform the British graduates. So what I'm focusing in, we are the experts believe that we passed the fourth industrial revolution. We passed the middle of the fourth industrial revolution and the researchers now start talking about industry five and the fifth industrial revolution where we will focus on the association between the workforce and the collaborative robots leading to mass customization and driven by internet of things and artificial intelligence the world is moving very, very fast. So I will not call it conclusion. I will call it keys for the future. The skills I was talking about is very essential for a world market that's changing and moving very fast day by day. And it's all double back on one key focus is someone's ability to intact and or adapt to change. And we are living in the change. Everybody now see that our industries are disrupted with the new ideas and methodologies maybe on daily basis. The customer demand is changing. The customer is looking for high level of quality capabilities, high level of quality and lower prices. So the job market will be changing soon. We are talking about 2030, less than 10 years from now. So, so the new job requirement is very important. Our graduates need to follow the new trends exploring new jobs and the skills related to the new market. And they need to work seriously towards mastering these skills and put themselves in the right of, in the right direction. And talking specifically about engineering, all the experts believe that engineering
tertiary students, we must improve the professional development. So I suggest that the uh, uh, leaders in the education sectors have a solid strategic plan to induce the 21st century skills into the educational system. And here in the UK, we focus on it from the middle school and the secondary school, not just in the universities. And also, I urge them to focus on the uh, CBD, continuous professional development of their staff, because not all the educators are capable to uh, participate in such sort of skills and the transfer such skills to their student, students. They need professional development. And also I urge the students and the graduate also to look themselves for such skills and work hard uh, for it in order to be successful in the digital age and in the uh, future uh, job market. Thank you very much for listening and sorry if I've been a little bit long because I couldn't, uh, you know, shorten the speech uh, less uh, than this. Thanks again to all uh, participants and everybody uh, working hard to make this uh, conference successful and I wish you all the good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a very informative session. Uh, that was uh, great hearing from you, sir. I thank Dr. Rami Al Haditi for joining us virtually and enlightening us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. All the participants may exit. Thank you for joining. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Yeah, our pleasure, sir. Thank you, sir.